வணக்கம் தேங்க்யூ சார் ஐ ஆம் ப்ரிவிலேஜ் டு ஸ்பீக் ஆன் திஸ் ஹிஸ்டாரிக் இன்டர்நேஷ்னல் கான்ஃபரன்ஸ் ஆர்கனைஸ்ட் பை தி பெரியார் இன்டர்நேஷ்னல் அண்ட் அமெரிக்கன் ஹியூமனிஸ்ட் அசோசியேஷன் ஐ பின் ரெக்யர்ட் டு அட்ரெஸ் ஆன் தி சப்ஜெக்ட் ஆஃப் சோஷியல் ஜஸ்டிஸ் ஆன் தி மார்ஜினலைஸ்ட் ஐ ஹாவ் three speakers also who will be following the subject and i have been warned by elangavan sir not to exceed the time allotted to us i will obey that when i speak of social justice having come from the land of periyar from tamil nadu india i will be confining my subjects related to the indian society the indian constitution in its preamble itself as clearly mentioned it starts with that i quote we the people of india having solemnly resolved to constitute india into a sovereign socialist secular democratic republic and to secure to all its citizens justice social economic and political liberty of status and of opportunity and to promote among them all fraternity assuring the dignity of the individual and the unity and integrity of the nation this is what the preamble of the indian constitution states it speaks about social justice the reason for mentioning social justice in the preamble has its answer in article 46 of the indian constitution drafted by baba saheb ambedkar the chairperson of the drafting committee article 46 clearly states that the state shall promote with special care the educational and economic interests of the weaker sections of the people and in particular of the scheduled caste and the scheduled tribes and shall protect them from social injustice and forms of exploitation so the reason is social injustice that was adopted for more than thousands of years in the name of caste in the name of varnashrama the majority of people we have been castigated as sudras were denied education were subjugated to humiliation that has brought the makers of the constitution to mention social justice in the preamble of the constitution but what is happening today there is a challenge on social justice today the challenge has come particularly from the state of tamil nadu in the state of tamil nadu which is being considered as the capital of health care because of the dravidian movement because of the struggle and sacrifices by periyar and the and the effectively continued by our beloved leader auxiliary k viramani that tamil nadu today enjoys the best health care in india but the government of india has brought an examination all india examination for medical admission called neet national entrance eligibility test that deprives the deprived sections from entering the medical education thereby the health care system will be totally will be going to the private sector where the people poor people cannot go to the private hospital that is what the aim of the government is there the so challenge is on the social justice in the form of neet in medical care education the second aspect is the government is going to introduce a national education policy the policy instead of promoting recommending scientific temper is recommending to the gold old days of vedika system of hereditary education where again our forefathers were denied education because of the hereditary education and each caste has been given the job whether the education will be there to that caste our sudras were denied education their epics 
Mahabharata says about Ekalaiba. Ramayana says about Sambuha. Those who have violated the Manula have been killed. That is what the message of Epic says. So the government says that we are going to recommend the Vedic system where again our Dalits, the backward classes, the scheduled caste, the scheduled tribes will be totally affected. This is again a challenge to social justice in India. Now, whether we have got a solution to this social justice, Tamil Nadu again has come in the front that has faced these challenges in the past under the dynamic leadership of a social revolution in Tande Periyar. When the constitution came into effect, our Madhavi Madam was telling about reservation policies that was implemented right from 1950. But the, in Tamil Nadu, which was called Metro's presidency then, right from 1928, we had education uh, reservation policy in the name of a communal reservation. That was challenged when the constitution came into effect in 1950. Periyar rose to the occasion. He fought for that. The constitution was implemented first time in India because of social justice, because of the fight given by Tande Periyar in 1951, the first amendment came for social justice. So we have won a battle in Tamil Nadu on that count. Second, in 1952, when Rajaji was the chief minister, he brought a hereditary education policy, Kulakalvi Thittam, that was again challenged by Periyar. And Rajaji has to go out of the chief ministership. We again won. The education policy was restored. And all the people were given education. In 1979, MGR brought a 9,000 GO policy. Where the family having 9,000 income and above, they are not eligible for reservation policy. Again, the Dravidian movement, the Periyar movement, under the leadership of a leader, Dr. K. Viramani, we fought in Tamil Nadu. We have won the battle and the reservation policy was restored and all the backward classes, scheduled class and tribu, tri tribes were able to enjoy the reservation policy. Again, in 1993, the existing 69 percent reservation policy was under challenge because of the stake given by the Supreme Court. Again, there was a great fight in Tamil Nadu under the leadership of Dr. K. Viramani, Periyar movement, Dravidar Kalakam. It fought. Not only it fought, it gave a draft policy to the government which was uh, accepted by the government. And today, the whole of India, Tamil Nadu enjoys a reservation act for the, the affirmative action in Tamil Nadu. That way, Tamil Nadu has given the path. Periyar has given the path. Our leader has given the path how to face these challenges to social justice. I think that is the only way our Periyar movement has to spread across Tamil Nadu, India, so that we can face these challenge, social challenges today and we can want the social justice.